and one of them is by the great English poet Philip Larkin, and then the other one is from Oscar Wilde, who we were hearing a little bit um, uh, about earlier for his regular visits here to the, the site of the place where his sister, um, just here, yeah, yeah, just here where his sister was no doubt. So um, Larkin, uh, City of Trees, and Larkin writes, their greenness is a kind of grief. And then Oscar Wilde, who was uh, no fan of Manchester, um, writes, I will give Manchester back to the shepherds. At the time, I don't think I need to tell you anything about this, but Sergio Aguero scored the um, uh, 2012 Premiership winning goal, um, and that gets mentioned, okay? <laughs> so, uh, all right. At the town hall, the valedictory do, the curator's art in parks, her metal tree, and the gallery's diversity get credit, which she abjures. Look is the residue of design, quote which around the room sparks applause, not for herself or the line, nor of course the fact that she is heading south, but that it asks for this new order to be acknowledged and sees the city's sprawl as managed. Cycling back under the candle chestnuts, past the gallery and through the curry miles of neon influence, its last two Irish pubs, the Clarence and the Whitworth, refitted now as a Christian cafe and a chrome and glass shisha bar. The crowd is nothing on the night 20,000 Libyans gathered at the southern end celebrating the death of Gaddafi, hours after it was announced on the BBC, whose old beehive building they camped beside in protests for months. Fireworks, flags, biscuit tin drums and gunshots, a party for the ages, like that afternoon on the allotment digging in the spuds when the neighbourly encore of cheers rolled in, Aguero going global on the end of Balotelli's flick, city going wild, submerging in its element those who'd once thought otherwise, mentally. By the time I got home, the news had pictures, a roadblock, ambulances and squad cars pulled up outside the arena. Overnight, it was first numbers, then names, and the council leader on the town hall steps in the same shirt I'd seen him in 12 hours earlier, and the mayor taking the microphone to promise business as usual, and not exactly steely line he would repeat. Likewise, the city would not be divided and goes from strength to strength. A man is arrested outside the Morrisons in Charlton. A door is blown in in Fallowfield. Where the Lego cargo van would park, white police trucks mark the corners. At a concert, I dismantle the book bag I've loved from work, while the metal detector cube slows and meanders. The summer nights demand updates. We write to friends about our kids. The schools stay open as they process classmates' tales of sleeping in a hotel overnight. The footage of a man with luggage on wheels buying bits and pieces in a corner shop circulates. This watchful ex student, born here, ill at ease, walking through the May weeks of the trees, slow green explosions, the air thick with willow pollen and honeysuckle, all invisible in the grayscale's pixel rendering of the place, scrambling it even as crowds gather elsewhere in shops and bars and streets to shoot the breeze watch a match on telly and follow their phones, as I do, student of uprootings and aftermath, hemmed in by the information which descends on us like summer rain, the stories and images as much a distraction as each attempt to make it all align, the sequence getting out of order which would track us as we move on from the rooms and fields and trees of the city's hundred towns, the separating griefs harden and endure. Thank you. And I'm just going to read a, 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 a short one um, to finish, which is called uh, House at Night. Congratulations, Kerry, again. I say that. Because there is no one else around, you like the house at night. Silent phones, 
a black screen, cherry blossom edging the extra hour. Nothing to do, no one's going to call. Spring, a forgotten pocket you did not do, turns up a late ray of light across your mouth and neck. House at night last a little longer. Thank you.
And we're delighted this year to have June Caldwell as one of our guest writers. Uh, June is the author of Room Little Darker, and her forthcoming novel is, is entitled uh, Little Town Moon. Uh, she curated somebody, uh, an exhibition of Lula Freya at the wonderful Museum of Literature in Dublin in St. Stephen's Green. And uh, she's a prize winner of the Moth International Short Story Prize and has been shortlisted for many more awards. Uh, so I'll now ask June. I would like to invite 
invite you up to read from the story, if that's okay.
caressed the wall and stuck. What I do know is that I'm not afraid, not anymore. I am prepared for whatever might be coming. Nothing can be feared. First a prayer. But I had forgotten that. Through the fog of stream, the steamer reaches aimlessly to the sky. There's a call from a river bird, and it sounds like the movement of wings. The darkness lightens. This time it is artificial. The flapping is louder and persistent. The sound of an engine. The throbbing aerial takes shape in the blue. The specter has come real. Had I truly expected this, or was I surprised? Even now I'm wondering my own proud gravity. Deck lights suspended from poles illuminate the river cruiser. This pleasure boat blows us towards me, seeking out the pool of the river bank. It is a big affair, out of the port of Ross, that has come up the river to the tidal reach just here. The engine is cut, and its echo fades. The boat has come about slowly in a second, side on to my hide. Voices can be heard, and a splash as an anchor is dropped. There's an awning stretched over the deck, and I can see the outlines of the revelers and hear their laughter. As the cruiser drifts up to a halt ever closer, I begin to make out the human forms. Faces flicker in the bulb lights as to through the laden air, close enough for me to make out the godliness of their owners. They are partying. Something of my own capacity has now come back as I stare out and see from my leafy battle and my anger. But never has my mind felt steadier, more anchored. The couple of dozen faces I find are familiar, pale, fleshy, a liverish wash over the whole chattering fuss. The lemon women with their beady looks and jolly dresses, the larger men that like to think they hold each other. That fat little man, old jowl and pizza, is bellowing and laughing at the end his own joke, and the sound is carried to the fields beyond. I wonder about the hard years of cattle. These people are sure, and the river has become a tension listener, giving flow to their bob and bob. As in China, marvel at the skills of men's hands, the deft flicking of a trowel, the steady touch of fingers centering the shaft, the risky power of a hayfork, spade, or her. A safe perch, too, for a feather and tiny bone or a pulse to the scratching lips of soft young life. There was a line I saw from fingertip to brain. I took this as my guide and went that way, working and shaping metal as my gift of promised means. A means so hideously betrayed, my touch redundant. Yes, I knew in your darkness, clutched down at last and waited the girls, wishing they could have been spared, but not here, not for this. And I had to let you go. And now I am free to go too. I quietly reach down for the long gun. My feather-like breath condenses on the cold barrel as I set it onto the brow as I forge myself. I slip the moon and push out, lying on the down floor, squinting down a sight line. My mind takes a deadly twist and my finger makes a soft move, rests easy on the eager curve of the trigger. In faded light, an aim is all best. There is less glare and distraction, pure competing nodes of brightness. The shapes of the still deck cast shadows, one on the other, as they move around. Facial features oscillate. I can pick out the whole assembly against the surrounding grey. <clears throat> Give me die, and my dream of our eternity begins. The crack of visual splatter or a shot of density. Each tiny shot turns onto a place of destruction. Vermilion dots appear on the light bulbs. A haze of ribbed flesh, hair and fabric swell and flow. A bloody evening dust. All is shrill and then slowly. 
There is silence as I slip out into the eternal rushing water, flies to catch. If we have any memory still, is it of our girl's soft hands nervously clutching their primary meats, our grief reflected in their frightened eyes? Is it of the emptiness of wet tiles in the hall? Is it of the adamant sounds of better days when to work was to live and living was the joy for the joy of it? Of a time when all they did not seem a confused little, blind to dirty advantage? Or is it of our various drenched corpses dragged from Miss Barrow's watery chambers? Their terror over for good. Maybe I can recall the impulse that pressed that trigger. Black. And then the red splatter and the dangling balls. That dream. Poppies. Sleep. For us all.
Christian here on this welcome tent. And last, last night we had a session in the, in the Goldsmith, and we put it was an open mic night, and I think we had 20 performers, which we had done <laughs> earlier into the morning. So uh, I would like to call and I invite you uh, to tell us about the writing and I'd like to read some short extracts from our book.
When I was a child, lemon and orange were my favorite colors. I spent a long time in hospital as a baby, so maybe this is making good use of all that subconscious pus doing the rounds. I am going to finish up by asking my lover to make me a cocktail using sliced lemons and giant ice cubes I bought on Amazon Prime the other day for 12 euro. The planet is failing, honestly, it is. I'm not as worried as your average 13 year old. I know I won't hang around long enough to fry or drown or turn scabby with new forms of airborne leprosy on the way. Even my handbag smells of lemons from the lemony wipes I sanitize with. And last week, emptying the shopping onto the small pink chairs in the kitchen, I sat on one of my mistakes and it felt like the gnarled fist of a massive menace telling me to get up off my arse and get back into life. If lemon trees can produce up to 600 pounds of lemons every year, then you can shirk off this dreadful bereavement. My mother despised lemons. <laughs>
among suspected crowds. The headers of those this year, Springwood White, Springwood Pink, Bertown Ruby, with a tinge of frost, frozen droplets doomed to evaporation, ready for extinction. This is Mother's Day with a history, a childhood story of long ago and the terrors too of their unknown, the helpless huddles waiting for the fever and how their typhus toll was told. On a hill the walkers strove in apprehensive distance on their Sunday stroll. The graph was streaked today, not yet peaked. Was there worse to come? It was breathless on the hillside where they struggled, but they knew that it would peak, and from the hill they crested perspective gained in the hope that lay beyond this unknown. And then a silent remembrance of somebody who was into Irish music and dancing and singing. His life would have been celebrated, but we couldn't. The day we heard you died, no music played. We stood in proscribed silence and obeyed. But down the lanes of memory came the strain. A timber flute was playing reels from Clare. We saw you first down Bridge Street on the stage where Clare and danced their exile sets with flair. And when the bells of Christ Church called for change, you danced the Caledonia and the play. On Talbot Street, Sean Tracy's branch was you, where youthful dreams and song and music bloomed. We sang of summers long ago in June, and mowed Pat Murphy's meadow round the room. The daffodils in March unnoticed swayed, but they'll come back and dance to choose you played. <laughs> Fortify with care, 
a child would watch for drifting dreams that went beyond the verge of what a world might say. And every year, as they migrate anew, a parent's thoughts of love will be with you. Can I read uh, another one? Um, another uh, poem I did was a film. Uh, early in the pandemic, you will remember that there were all sorts of protests about this, that, and the other going through Dublin. It's written uh, from an observation point of view from a statue uh, in Dublin because some of the statues have horses and some of the people protesting. Now, don't say that to anybody. But this is a COVID villanelle, and the statue was James Joyce uh, at the top of North Erwin Street. James Joyce stood on North Erwin Street, walking cane and face mask on, listening to the passing talk. <coughs> no cough, no phlegm, no COVID taste, no COVID smell. James Joyce stood on North Erwin Street. We saw Bukuli and go past, anti cat and anti mask, listening to the passing talk. Was it a bat? Was it a bird? A variant, a vector spread. James Joyce stood on North Earth Street. The Pfizer vaccine gives a start. Two small pricks, a month apart, listening to the passing talk. Where Anna Livia's name is read. Where Gabriel Conroy weeps the dead, listening to the passing talk, James Joyce stands on North Earth Street. <laughs> and can I finish with another bit of that? You know, it's because I'm home and because I'm here in the church, maybe. During the uh, COVID, uh, my father's anniversary came, and I went down to the church, we have a great big church in Eagle and I went in, and there was absolutely nobody there. And I sort of sat down, and I said, how do you pray here, you know? So, in fact, a poem can be a prayer, a prayer can be a poem. I took an envelope out of my pocket, and this is what I wrote. The Villanelle is a shepherd's uh, song, so there's repetition in it, you know, as in the recent music. And this is the anniversary of Villanelle that I wrote. Thank you for everything that you've done, for being who you were, for making me who I am, for being a part of every season, every rising and every setting sun, for everything that you've done. For what you planted in the springtime to be a part of nature's plan for making me what I am. For sharing in the harvest and for share, showing what was done. Thank you for what was done. For being the life of midday sunlight and the north star guide at night for making me who I am. A lifetime's passed since you've gone. My lifetime. Filling that receding time. Thank you for making me for what I am. And thank you for everything that you've done. Thank Before 
before I do so, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, especially our sponsors. And I see Mary Reynolds down there. Uh, Mary Carlton Reynolds has been our librarian in County Longford for the last 30 years. She retired this year. And uh, we wouldn't be here for 26 years, I can tell you, without the support of Mary Reynolds. Uh, so thank you very much.